Welcome to my lecture online and now for something a little bit more challenging. Let's say that we have a copper bar that has a cross-sectional area of two centimeters squared which is surrounded by some insulating material. The thickness of the insulin, insulating material is 0.4 centimeters. It has a heat conductivity constant of 0.01 calories per second per centimeter, centimeter per centigrade degree. Notice the bar is 20 centimeters long. On one end, the bar is kept at 100 degrees centigrade. At the other end, the bar is kept at 0 degrees centigrade. And the outside temperature is 0 degrees centigrade. That means that the heat flow from the bar to the outside through the insulating material on this end is much greater than it is on that end. In other words, Q dot is not a constant. The amount of heat per unit time flowing through the insulation depends upon the temperature difference, which is much greater here, 100 degrees centigrade, and much smaller here, down to 0 degrees centigrade. So, we're supposed to find and calculate the heat loss per second through the insulation. How do we do that? Well, starting with the original equation right here, where Q dot, considering that it's constant, is equal to the difference in the temperature, divided by the natural log of B over A through the insulating material, divide that by 2 pi KL, L being the length of that, and K, of course, being the constant, the connectivity constant of the insulating material. But Q dot is going to change, it's not a constant. So what we can imagine here is that if we take a small section in this direction right here, all the way around, so we're going to take a small little slice of that, and let's say that the width of that section is equal to dx and then the small amount of heat flow through that section as compared to the whole thing can be considered to be a dq so in other words we can write that dq dot the small amount of heat going through that little section right there instead of having a total length of that we're going to replace this by a dx so this will be equal to the delta t divided by the natural log of the ratio of the outside to the inside radius of that layer divided by 2 pi k times delta x. Now notice that if we rewrite this equation we have dq dot uh, is equal to delta t times 2 pi k delta x divided by the natural log of b over a. And then if we put the delta x, oh, not delta x, I think we want a dx, we don't want a delta x. A dx would be better, because we talk about differentials, and so finally what we can do is we can write this as dq dot dx is equal to delta t divided by the natural log of b over a, and then we have this times 2 pi k, 2 pi Okay. Now, what is delta T? Delta T is the difference between the inside temperature of the copper and the outside temperature, which is always at zero. And the inside temperature changes, goes all the way from 100 to zero over the distance of 20 centimeters. So think about it this way, we have a temperature gradient. We have something that looks like this. If this is temperature versus X, we can see that at some point when X is equal to zero, the temperature is 100, and when x is equal to 20, the temperature is 0. So that looks like a linear curve, which means that we have something like y equals mx plus b. So in this case, y is equal to minus, it's a drop of 100 for a run of 20, that would be minus 5x plus 100, but of course, y is the temperature and x is the distance so t is equal to minus 5x plus 100 and notice that the delta t that we have in here really is the temperature because the delta t is the temperature that the copper is at minus the outside temperature which is zero so delta t in essence is really t so in this case t is the same by definition as the delta t so this equation can then be written as dq dx is equal to delta t, which can be written as minus 5x plus 100. That's a terrible plus here, so try again. Plus 100 times 2 pi k 
divided by the natural log of b over a. And if you're wondering what all that noise in the background is, our puppy just found a ping pong ball and she's having a blast with the little ping pong ball. Matter of fact, I don't think that ping pong ball is going to last much longer. But anyway, continuing with the problem, actually, I <laughs> All right, continuing with the problem. Uh, so we have dq, dx here. What we're going to do, we have an x variable here. We need to separate the variables. So here we can say dq dot is equal to, the constants are going to be 2 pi k over the natural log of b over a. That's, these are all constants. Times the quantity minus 5x plus 100 times dx. And now notice, we can actually integrate both sides. So the integral of the left side is going to be q dot, the total q dot. And on the right side, we're going to integrate from 0 to 20, because that's the length of the bar. Which means that q dot is equal to 2 pi k divided by the natural log of b over a times minus 5x squared over 2 plus 100x, evaluate from 0 to 20. Now notice when we plug in the lower limits, we get nothing. When we plug in the upper limits, we get the following. q dot is equal to 2 pi times k. Now k is equal to 0 0.01, divided by the natural log of outside diameter will be, wow. We need to find out what the radius is. We know the area, but we don't know the radius. Hmm, so the area is equal to 2, well, no, no, it's not 2 pi, it's pi r squared, pi r squared, which means r is equal to the square root of a over pi, which is equal to the square root of 2 divided by pi. So that's the radius, the radius of the copper, and then we have to add to that 0.4. So the inside radius A, so this of course would be equal to A, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in the A there. So 2 divided by pi, take the square root of that, which is close enough to 0 0.8. So that means that the inside radius is equal to 0 0.8 centimeters. The thickness is 0 0.4, so that means the outside radius is 1.2 centimeters. So they gave us an additional problem. They only gave us the cross-sectional area of the copper, not the radius of the copper. So B over A will be 1.2 divided by 0 0.8. So those are all the constants. Now we're going to multiply that times when we plug in the upper limit. That would be uh, four, uh, 40 times negative 5. That's, um, let's see, 40 times negative 5. 400 times negative 5 is minus 2,000, divided by 2, that would be minus 1,000, plus 2,000, so that would be a net of 1,000, so Q dot, and of course that's going to be in calories per second, Q dot, it's going to be equal to 1,000 times 0 0.01 times 2 times pi divided by... 1.2 divided by 0.8, of course that's, see, take the natural log of that, equals, and 155, that's 155 calories per second will be the total heat flow through the insulating material from front to back, all added together. So that's the total heat flow through the insulating material. Notice that the difference in the front is much greater, in the back it's much smaller, and that is how it's done.